Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in this video we continue exploring the world of Little Nightmares 2 ahead of the game's launch in February, with a look at one of its newest antagonists, the Doctor. This putrid monster was introduced to us recently with the advent of a hospital demo, for which you can find a full playthrough right here on the channel. In this video we will break down everything we currently know about the Doctor and then move into theory and speculation territory as we try to work out what his motivations are and those of his patients for that matter. So sit back, relax and let's investigate the Doctor and his hellish hospital. Let's begin by taking a look at the Doctor and his physical appearance. His body is round and bloated, and this bloatation extends elsewhere, such as his stumpy fingers seen here. The Doctor looks to be middle-aged, his hair thinned out, wrinkles on his forehead, and cheeks saggy, causing a large buildup of bags under the mad surgeon's crimson eyes. Eyes which roll back into his head as he hangs upside down, trying to locate his prey. If we pay close attention to his teeth however, and the positioning of his eyeballs, we notice, much like the other creatures of this world, that this doctor appears to be wearing a mask. Just like other masks, this one is ill-fitting. The lip portion is rolled back, displaying rows of crooked, pointy teeth. What is interesting about the Doctor in regard to these masks however, is that he doesn't seem to just wear them, but rather has a hand in their design. Just before reaching his lair, our heroes Mono and Six happen upon a workshop, and inside a workbench, above which hang a series of all too familiar masks. Masks which appear to be fashioned from human skin. We see Roger the Janitor's mask, and those of both the cooks and the visitors seen aboard the moor in the original game. So this doctor uses his surgical knowledge to cut and form these hideous garments, and we'll delve into why a little later. We don't know too much in regards to how encounters with the doctor will play out. Snippets of gameplay involving this upside down terror can be glimpsed in a recent trailer for Little Nightmares 2. Here we can see that the doctor lives on the ceiling, working from above as he operates on the unfortunate guests of the hospital. This could explain why his creations turn out so botched. As Mono and Six flee the Doctor, he crawls across the ceiling like a grub, turning over furniture with his powerful arms in order to snatch them up. It seems at least one sequence will involve our adventurers climbing up a series of hospital beds in order to make their escape, the Doctor in hot pursuit. For now, let's discuss what we know about the Doctor using words straight from publisher Bandai Namco's own press release over on the PlayStation blog, where the Doctor is described as follows. The hospital is home of the Doctor and his patients, each one a collection of clattering parts that lurch after anything unusual in the environment. Save your sympathy, these hypochondriacs willingly came to the hospital in search of a medical solution for the boredom infecting their lives. So the Doctor did what he could, taking away some bits and adding others as his artistic sensibilities saw fit. And once the process has begun, it's not as if the patients could voice a complaint. This short description tells us a great deal about the Doctor, how he is obsessed with his own twisted artistic vision for each surgery, which explains why he deforms those he works on. But it also tells us a little about his patients, how these unfortunate residents of the Pale City end up in his operating theatre. So let's take a look at these patients and some theories as to what brought them to the hospital and why. Anyone who has followed my coverage of Little Nightmares 2 will no doubt be familiar with the mannequin-esque patients roaming the halls of the hospital. These patients are cobbled together from human torsos and mannequin appendages to form hybrid monstrosities. They seem to possess no real intelligence, and only one purpose, to capture anything out of place on the ward. They come in a variety of guises, but always contain portions of an original human body, most likely using vital organs of the original person to keep the body alive, even if the soul within may have long moved on. 
These mannequins also contain one fatal flaw in their design, a flaw that saves Mono many times upon encountering them. They freeze to the spot when light is shone upon them. But why? To answer this curious question, we need to take a look at where these patients originated from. We are told the doctor's patients come to him willingly, looking for a solution to the boredom infecting their lives. Infecting is an interesting choice of words here, especially when we reference footage of the townsfolk found in trailers for Little Nightmares 2. These odd looking people stare hypnotically into the static screens of the televisions found around the streets of the Pale City. In previous videos I have touched on how I believe this static is a nefarious broadcast coming directly from the ominous signal tower, a tower transmitting harmful airwaves and subliminal imagery through this static which distorts the very fabric of time itself. This airwave distortion is the reason why the faces and bodies of those living within this world eventually become eroded and deformed as they reach adulthood. It may be the fate awaiting Six and Mono in the years to come if they cannot shut down the signal tower for themselves. All of those years glued to the hypnotic broadcasts of these televisions has deformed the townsfolk and infected them with boredom, draining them of their energy and souls. It has been my theory that the signal tower runs from spirit energy. Those killed in this world become trapped, ghosts in time, as the tower uses them to power itself. This is hinted at at a recent trailer, where we see the glitching ghost of a small child. This may well be a child victim killed by the doctor, who then turned them into one of the many doll-like students over at the schoolhouse their spirit trapped in its resting place and used to power the tower. So the townsfolk have gradually had their souls drained and appearances distorted by the static of these televisions, and finally, like zombies of their former selves, turned to the doctor to try and regain their humanity, requesting surgery to restore their features and bring them back some happiness. But nothing in the world of Little Nightmares is happy, and so these unfortunate souls are transformed into soulless drones for an unknown purpose. So if we return to that question, why do these mannequins freeze when touched by bright light, we do now have some logical conclusions to draw. Firstly, Mono's flashlight may well resemble the large light found in the operating theatre, and for a brief moment, the traumatic memory of the torturous surgery these patients endured at the hands of a doctor comes rushing back. In that instant, they remember everything. The deception, their body mutilated, cut up and taken from them, and in shock, they freeze up. Secondly, this flashlight may also channel signal energy. We see in these trailer shots the bright light emitted from the televisions has a soothing, hypnotic effect on the townsfolk, so it is possible that Mono's flashlight also recalls this same feeling. Basically, either the light causes trauma due to triggering memories of the mannequin's surgery, or it soothes the patients as it reminds them of those signal tower broadcasts. Currently, there's no way to know for sure, so what do you think? Before we wrap up this video, I want to touch on the Doctor's motives as promised earlier. We know he is a crazed medical artist who enjoys deforming and experimenting on his patients. But why? Well to answer this question we need to think about the world of Little Nightmares as a whole and how it works. The signal tower seems to have control over everything and everyone, infecting the minds of the adults and attempting to manipulate the children. The reason it does this is to retain total control. The Doctor's mind, like many others, has been warped over the years, as has his appearance. He may have started out trying to help people, creating masks from the skin of the dead to help cover up the afflictions of those deformed by the signal tower. But as the years went by and he was exposed to more and more toxic transmissions, seeing more and more horrifying sights, his mind snapped. Just like the townsfolk and those aboard the moor, he became a slave to the broadcast. Those approaching him for help became his victims. 
He removed their humanity and created mindless drones. Works of art in his eyes, now free from higher consciousness and guilt, these mannequin creations could serve one purpose, to simply function within this world, to carry out tasks for the signal tower and never question the world around them. They would never age, nor die, but simply exist. Years of helping keep humanity in check has led the Doctor to become a high-ranking member of this world. His portraits can even be seen in the Little Nightmares DLC, The Residence. Years of such traumatising and sinful acts have rid the Doctor of any compassion he ever had, and now his life is dedicated to his grotesque art and servitude to the all-powerful signal. Perhaps we will free his mind and soul if Mono and Six manage to stop this broadcast. We'll have to wait and see just how this sorrowful tale plays out. And that's it for today's video, I hope you did enjoy this look at the Doctor and his patience, and if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.